Hello everybody, welcome. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com and today is December 3rd, 2019 and this is a mystery report, 2019 newsletter, the mystery report. This is the first one in the series. It's going to begin now. So there's uh, some things to explain. So we're just getting this program started off. I was inspired to do this is the way things should have been all along. I was inspired by actually by Steve. Steve was getting kind of angry at me. And this can happen in a spiritual debate. It's very easy to happen. Right? So the idea here is to separate. This is totally Body of Christ Christian based newsletter from the perspective, from the Christian perspective. This is more about this is exactly what it's about right here. This weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1 through Revelation. Once you see them, it's a life-changing thing. If you cannot see them, well, that's what this is about, to help you to see them. So there's a... Um, there's a lot of things for me to show you around the periphery, things that's going on, websites, chat rooms, and things like that associated. But first, let's go back to the uh, website. Let's go down to the bottom. The new uh, Eric interview, this is MP3, audio only. I haven't had time yet. I like to make a video for this. You see the video link, and then that means that I had the time. Get that done. This is the Crystal Power interview, and that's a video link. That's right there for you. Okay, mystery newsletters are coming. It's going to be a while before this first one. It's going to be a month or so for non-subs to have it for free. Like 47 just came available. It's going to be it's going to be a little while, but eventually there's going to be a complimentary link to to number one. This is the regular programs, Black Star. And this, I'm still working on it. I'm going to put a sign up here, Black Star sign down here, the um, the mystery report. So these programs work pretty much the same way. $25 newsletter subscription, two bucks a month, and you're going to get 52 of these newsletters. We'll start starting in 2020. Then you want to be in the tutor program. You want to join us for Tuesday evening chats. That's the premium program. It's just four dollars a month. Whenever I say four dollars a month, that means that that's the average. Of what it is over the year. It's a one time, one time yearly payment, $50 per year. Just like the Newsletter Survivor Group program is $50 a year. So you see how it's, if you just want to be a newsletter subscriber, you just want to download the newsletter, follow me on the weekly reports, this is the way you want to go right here. Then you decide that you want to join us in the chat, you want to be me to be your personal tutor, you want more benefits, in other words, then you just come over here to the upgrade button. 25 and 25 is 50. It's just like this. 25, 25 is 50. Start out here. End up here by using these buttons right here. Get the signed autograph um, numbered copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, with a donation. And um, I'll process that and get your book off to you just as, just as fast as I can. So that's how you connect on the website. Before I show you around this uh, newsletter, and nothing's written in stone here, you have the opportunity. Just imagine the first news, the Black Star newsletter that was published in January of 2012. We came together in a chat room, and I was living in the woods in Arkansas. Now I wasn't going to be able to make it; I had to have some support somewhere. And so, 100 people in the room, we all came up with ideas, and the newsletter program is what emerged out of that. So this is the way things are starting off. It's better than the first newsletter for Black Star. Trust me on that part. We've learned a lot between now and then. I've learned a lot between now and then. I'm gathering more of the... This is Royce. He interviewed me back in 2015. I have other interviews that I'm gradually going to be able to get uploaded to the MP3 channel and then get the links in here. So this is a this is a work in progress. The, what, the way this is... Uh, at first, My first idea was to take you through the mystery explained line by line. But then Dave wrote me and said, we really need to start at the beginning. The message that I got, I'm uh, characterizing, is start at the beginning. And then I realized, 
is exactly what we need to be doing. Go down to the scripture section and begin right here. So this is the introductory first new, the f newsletter number one for the mystery report. And you can tell where we're going to go already. This is going to be the first one. We're going to eliminate semantics. So when I'm saying the gospel, you know we're talking about, for us today, we're talking about the word of the cross gospel message. We know the doctrinal precepts that teach it. We are able to distinguish that and separate it from the gospel of the kingdom. That's what this message is all about for today. So this information is presented to you and is presented here. Christian Forums. ChristianForums.com So this post was started. When did I start this post? May of 2007. 12, more than 12, 12 years ago. And I noticed that they changed the format and it's got some not so nice they changed the formatting their coding so it messed some of the things up but everything is proper you can join here at christianforums.com i've been a member here since like 2000 what a long long time a senior member here and i got two million hearts or something anyway so you can join here and you can actually come to this thread right here right and you can hit the reply button. You can sh uh, click up here. You can get the link. Send it to your friends. You guys can meet here. And then you can quote me and send your reply. You know, if you don't agree with anything that's said here, you quote it. And you say, wait a minute, this is off. This is really supposed to be this and this and this. And here's the scripture to support that. So this is what you call an OP, an opening post. And that is precisely what you see. There's another post just like this for the two churches of the New Testament. And I'll be showing you that next week. So this is ChristianForums.com, just like it sounds. ChristianForums.com, if you want to join there. I'm members of lots of other ones. This is the good. And I spend time in the dispensationalism room. Why am I in the dispensationalism room? This is where I go to, to debate the scriptures with dispensationalists. Not because I am one, even though many people think that I am. These people, the, the, the Dispies that are here, there's all kinds of them. They will never tell you that I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm their, like, battle opponent in these rooms. There's some things that the Dispies have right, like there's some things the Baptists have right, the Catholics have right. There's bits and pieces of it. Everybody's got part of the picture. Dispies do pretty, pretty darn good. They see the different dispensations, which is households. Throughout scripture. I'm going to show you a little bit about more of that in a second. But whenever you start trying to place a label on me that I'm a dispy, then I'm going to prove you wrong. And the one way I'm going to do that is you can go and argue at our post. These are dispies. No, here we go again. No. See dispies. <laughs> these is coming this is what these the uh there's all kinds of them again. Maybe um I can write an article on the different kinds of dispensationalists that are out there. Sounds like a funny word, doesn't it, if you've never heard it before. So this is where you can come and write, and I, if, if it's okay with you, I'm going to get your permission. But when you write and I respond, then I'd like to take that and post that in the weekly newsletters. So here's the way that it's going to work in this, for, in this original newsletter. I'm going to pull up right here. Then you're going to get the presentation. See how it's all, everything's cleaned up? And there's anything in here that you disagree with then you can quote it and send it to me at the email address that's in your notification email. It's not the website address. It's the one that comes in your notification email. Okay, then I'm going to take that. I'm going to paste your reply into the document for that week's newsletter, and then I'm going to answer it. Everything's going to be right in front of it. So YouTubers, subscribers, right? Newsletter subscribers, tutor subscribers, then... We, everybody can see what's happening on a weekly basis. So whenever, let's say, six months from now, somebody subscribes to this program, then they are going to be able to go back to week one and begin L and listen to my words right here and explain everything about the program, right? And then they're going to be able to read my posts and go through the same process. Not only that, they're going to go be able to go to 
the second newsletter. So the second newsletter is going to lay out the two churches of the New Testament. That's where everything's going to be laid out to begin the deliberations. YouTubers, you want to make your comments in the, in the comment section, then I'll get there as time permits. Okay, but obviously I'm going to be spending more time with supporters and, and answering their concerns. Right? So next week's newsletter is going to be have the two churches of the New Testament and the arguments for and against the two Gospels of the New Testament. You see how that works? So then in the next, in the third newsletter, it's going to be the four baptisms of the New Testament. Then there will be the arguments for and against the two churches. So somebody that begins with all this, has never seen any of this before, would be will be able to re go to this first newsletter, read the opening, click the activated links, do your research, and then you can offer a reply to this later in the timeline. Six months from now, you can say, well, in newsletter one, it says this, and this is my reply. So you can, if those of you that are following this week by week are going to be able to, to experience the back and forth deliberations as we go through and carefully examine all these things. And I'm pre presenting it from the perspective of the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. For those of you that have never heard that interpretation before, you're going to get a good dose of it right here in this video. Okay. So starting right at the top, and then I'll show you around the uh, newsletter more. This mystery report is dedicated to building a strong doctrinal foundation by carefully examining the differences between the Gospel of the Kingdom and our Word of the Cross Gospel message for today. God gathers members to the Kingdom Bride. That's church number two. I mean, that's church number one. Church number one. Sorry. I'm doing the Kingdom. See, the Gospel of the Kingdom is one. Church number one is going to be the prophetic Kingdom Bride. Peter, John, and James. Kingdom Bride, they're mentioned in John 3.29. You can click on the link right here. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. John the Baptist is speaking. Okay, through the first gospel described below, and members of the body of Christ, the mystery body of Christ, through gospel number two. Two different dispensations. Okay, this is not our gospel for today. Nobody has been saved by the gospel of the kingdom almost 2,000 years. Gospel of the Kingdom. Here are the verses. It's called the Gospel of uh, to the Circumcised by Paul in Galatians 2.7. The good news that the Kingdom of Heaven is at hand. John the Baptist preaches it there. Christ preaches it here. The twelve are sent out to preach it right here. It's also Matthew 9.35 where Christ is preaching the Gospel of the Kingdom. This gospel of the kingdom is according to prophets. It's seen by the Old Testament prophets. They see that the kingdom is coming for Israel. They obtain eternal life by keeping the commandments. That's precisely what Jesus Christ says in this verse, these verses right here. Water baptism for the forgiveness of sins. That's John the Baptist right out of the gate. Water baptizing for the forgiveness of sins. Some people think that, well, water can't forgive sins. Yes, it does for the gospel of the kingdom. It's the same Greek phrase used that Paul uses in Ephesians 1.7 for the forgiveness of sins. Standing on your head for 10 minutes will forgive sins if that's what God says to do. God is forgiving your sins. He says, be repent, repent and be baptized in water. John the Baptist, that's part of the gospel of the kingdom. That's what they were doing before Christ died for anybody. Okay, and then there's one in the name of, and this is the one that's in the name of the Father. Because John the Baptist went out first in the name of the Father. Jesus Christ comes second in the name of the Son. The twelve go out on the day of Pentecost in the name of the Holy Spirit. Three different ministries preaching the same gospel of the kingdom that was in transition. Nobody laid hands to give anybody the Holy Spirit in Mark 1. That came on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit baton had to be passed from John the Baptist to Christ in the Jordan River at his baptism. And Christ had to leave for the Holy Spirit to be sent to the twelve. This is a one, two, three step process of offering the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, then there's a baptism in, in the name of the Father. That is John's baptism, name of the Son. They're separate baptisms. 
you see people receiving the second baptism after they receive the first. There's a period, there's a gap in between. Then there's the spirit, there's the, uh, the third baptism. That's through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, through the laying on of hands. Some people were walking around just having John's baptism. They didn't know about Christ yet. They didn't heard that message yet. They didn't hear part about the Holy Spirit either. But whenever they heard it, then they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Fell on them. Right in front of the Apostle Paul, who also preaches the gospel of the kingdom. People get confused because this was the only gospel in town when Paul was converted. These are justified by works and not by faith alone. It's exactly what James says. James 2. Kingdom disciples are under Mosaic law. Click on the links and read. They are under Mosaic law until heaven and earth pass away. Kingdom bride is under the law. They have to keep the law, just like Israel of the Old Testament. Now that is the gospel of the kingdom. These are the doctrinal precepts teaching the gospel of the kingdom and where you find them in the scriptures. If you disagree, quote me. And then make your case and provide the scriptural support, just like you see right here. Okay, this is our gospel for today, that many believe is the only gospel in the New Testament, with inclusions from gospel number one. This gospel message was revealed to Paul after his conversion in Acts 9. Now, Paul preaches the gospel of God. Note that Christ preached the gospel of God, God in Mark 1, 14 through 15, which is gospel number one above. Gospel of the kingdom is what Christ preached. Christ couldn't run around saying, have faith in my shed blood. He hadn't died yet. But he is preaching the gospel. Right out of the gate in Mark 1. That's the gospel of the kingdom. Recognizing the difference is what helps you to separate the doctrinal precepts teaching both the gospel of the kingdom for kingdom Jews all right, members of the prophetic kingdom bride, the kingdom of priests. But then this word of the cross gospel message is about building the body of Christ. Totally different dispensation, totally different household. Nobody even saw us in the Old Testament. Paul's gospel, he calls it my gospel right here. Because it was revealed to him through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1, I'm going to I quote that down below. He calls it the gospel of the grace of God in combination with this same passage, preaching the kingdom, which is the gospel of the kingdom. And these two are part of the whole purpose of God. God needs intercessors for his throne before the Lamb, and he needs members of the Lamb. Members of the Lamb's body, Christ's body, that's us. It's according to the revelation of the mystery, not seen by the prophets. So well, you'll notice that two down here opposes two up here. This is according to prophecy, seen by the prophets. Ours is according to the revelation of the mystery, not seen by the prophets. They can't be the same gospel if one's seen and one's not, in other words. Saved by God's grace through faith apart from works. Ephesians 2, 2 8, 9, maybe the most famous uh, verses from the Apostle Paul. You go back up and look at number three, they're saved by works. Repentance is a work. Water baptism with human hands is a work. Sins forgiven through redemption that is in Christ, through his shed blood. That's opposed to water baptism for forgiveness of sins. Study the Greek in Ephesians 1, 7 and the Greek up here for the forgiveness of sins. Mark 1, 4, Acts 2, 38 for the forgiveness of sins. We have one baptism. Ephesians 4, 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's done by the Holy Spirit, the one Spirit. Click right here. Click right here, click right here. You'll see it. The Holy Spirit baptizes. Whenever we obey the gospel, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for our sins on the third day. God raised him from the dead, and he's seated at the right hand of God in the heavenly places. Right now. That's the gospel. You hear it, you believe it, the Holy Spirit hands you the faith of Jesus so you can believe it. You believe it. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into Christ's body on the cross at Calvary 2,000 years ago. When Christ dies, you die. Christ goes into the earth, you go into the earth. 
God raised him from the dead. He raises you from the dead. He seats you in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Finished product. Done. Saved by God's grace through faith without works. Add a work to it and you defile the simplicity of the cross. Add water baptism, circumcision, any of the works. Sinner's prayer. Billy Graham says, Sinner's prayer. Just do this and you'll be saved. No, it's salvation by grace through faith. Hearing and believing, period. That's it. So when and we receive the Spirit by hearing and believing the Gospel. Hearing with faith. The Holy Spirit is an active participant. Seals us in Christ on the cross. We're seated in the heavenly places right now. Finished product. We are justified by faith apart from works. Remember? So number seven. Kingdom bride members. Peter, John, James. They're justified by works and not by faith alone. We are under grace and not under law. Kingdom disciples are under Mosaic law. Totally different dispensation. So this is uh, this is my commentary. And I hope that somebody out there is going to quote me and either agree or disagree. That's what this that, that that's what this is about. The two gospels hypothesis says that God sent John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and the twelve in three separate ministries to preach the gospel of the kingdom, starting with John the Baptist, who the ship say came first. I'll fix that before the upload. Came first as Elijah. And pardon me, I just stopped and edited that. I'm going to make sure to get everything right for you guys. Who came first as Elijah to fulfill Old Testament prophecy. John the Baptist received the Holy Spirit while in his mother's womb. By way of his father Zacharias, who was chosen by Lot to go behind the second veil on the Day of Atonement. So you know this is happening in September. John the Baptist is already in his mother's womb. He's going to be born around the time of the Passover. We know that Mary is not pregnant because Mary runs to Elizabeth. If she was heavy burdened with, with the child, she wouldn't have been she wouldn't have uh, been running to see Elizabeth. And that's whenever she found out she wasn't at the end, but she had just started her pregnancy. Alright? So Christ is going to be born in the fall. John the Baptist is going to be born in the spring. They're going to be born on opposite sides of the calendar, similar to a near side and a back side black star quake event. Very similar to that. They're born on very, very near holy days. Christ wasn't born December 25th. Hope you guys realize that. The way that we know that is because that Mary and Joseph were on their way to had to pay their taxes, which would be just after the harvest. The king got his taxes just after the harvest. That's an important thing to realize. And before they the winter, when people couldn't travel, and before the people ran out of their money, before they spent their money. So there, there was a critical period whenever these taxes were paid, and they had to go to a particular city. The 12 tribes each had a different city that they went to to pay their taxes. We knew that, that um, so anyway, that's how we know the timeline that Christ is going to be, it's in, going to be late September, early October. It's going to be right around the, um, the equinox. And John the Baptist is going to be in the spring equinox, six months apart. Whenever you boil everything down, that's, that's what, uh, that's the conclusion that I draw after decades of research into that area. Okay, so the two gospel hypothesis says, okay, John the Baptist came first as a logic to fulfill Old Testament prophecy. John the Baptist received the Holy Spirit while in his mother's womb. Zacharias, see Zacharias, the way that, the way that they kept all of the priests ready all the time was by choosing one by lot. They didn't know who it was going to be. Everybody's lot goes into the hat, and they reach into the hat and pull it out, and whoever it is, that's who it is. You're the one that has to go behind the veil on the Day of Atonement. Once a year, they go behind there, and they tie a rope to your leg. Because if you're not purified, if you're not pure, if 
you know, if you do one thing wrong and that you go behind the veil, you're going to drop and fall dead. Nobody's going to be able to go get you. That's what, whenever this happens, they tie a, this is, this is the truth. They tie a rope to your leg. You go behind there, because you come in presence of the Holy Spirit, and you're not pure, you're not ready, boom, you're dead. So, John, here, Zacharias goes behind the veil, he doesn't die, he's ready, right? The Holy Spirit went with him, from the, between the wings of the cherubim, from the Holy of Holies, boom. So, they go into the, um, he goes into the temple, the Holy Spirit goes with him, but Zacharias doesn't believe him. And so, the Spirit struck Zacharias dumb until the time that John the Baptist was, this is how John the Baptist was baptized in his mother's womb with the Holy Spirit that came through the, from the Holy of Holies. Now, there's a thread, there's a Holy Spirit thread that runs all the way through the Bible. And one of these days, I'm going to do a, do a uh, article on it where the spirit that that the earth is made void and the spirit moves across the surface of the waters holy spirit doing its consecration work already in genesis 1 2 all the way through the bible from the incarnation of melchizedek to being in the tabernacle of moses being in the temple david's temple right and then being transferred from host to host john the baptist christ is going to get it in the jordan river Remember, John says that he must increase and I must de decrease. The Holy Spirit comes upon Christ. John decreases. He goes to prison, gets his head cut off. Christ says, I can't go. This is John. I've got this identified. i got the, these, uh, these verses all put together for you. Christ says, it's better for you that I go. Because then I can send you the helper. The helper? Where have we seen that word before? The helper. Because it's used right here in John 16, 7 through 11. Christ's going to send the helper. You see it with Eve back in the garden, the helper. He's Adam's helper, just like the Holy Spirit is the helper. They're both water witnesses. That's the reason why. God gives you part of the code here, and he gives, gives you part of it in Genesis 2, part of it in Genesis 3, part of it in John 16. So you can see the comparison between Eve as Adam's helper and the Holy Spirit as the helper of the Father, who's the spirit witness, and the Son, who's the blood witness. Spirit, blood, and water. I'm telling you, the spirit, blood, water pattern runs throughout the whole Bible. Okay. So, the Holy Spirit is going to offer the gospel of the kingdom to Israel beginning on the day of Pentecost, just like John the Baptist did. That's what this is about. John the Baptist did. Christ did. The Twelve did. They all offer the gospel of the kingdom. Christ hasn't died for anybody. The, until the end of the four Gospels. He ascends in Acts 1, 9 through 11 right there. So he has to leave. They get the Holy Spirit. The thing is, Christ already warned them about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit right here in Matthew 12. He says, uh, you can get by with it with uh, the, the Son of God. You can get by with it blaspheming the Son, but you will not be forgiven for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The reason that he says that is because this is a one, two, three strikes you're out thing. If you don't accept Christ as the King, you can still accept the gospel of the kingdom through the Holy Spirit. So John's allowed to die in prison. Christ, they demand his death. That's what they're saying right here. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And then in this, Acts 6 and 7, you see Israel, by the time Paul he saw at that time, his, actually his name is both. Most everybody that you see in these scriptures, they have two names. They're known, they're like a, you'd call it a Roman name. They have their regular fisherman name. And then they have their, it's the difference between Cephas and Petros for Peter. It has two names. Almost everybody has two names. And Saul doesn't say that he's changed his name to Paul. It says, in uh, whenever they, it shows a dispensational shift. We'll get into that more whenever we get to that part of the scriptures. But Paul's name is Saul. They're they're but they're depending on who you are and what the perspective you're coming from. You're going to call him one or the other. If you're a Gentile, he's Paul to you. He's Paul to me. He's Saul 
to kingdom Jews who do not recognize him as a steward of the dispensation of God's grace. But on the same site, this is where the early rain's bride is cut off in 70 A.D. They're mentioned as being cut off in Revelation 20, verse 4, where you see that word beheaded. It is not beheaded. It's used one time in the entire Bible. And it means to cut off. This is where they're cut off, right here, because of the transgression. Romans 11:11. 11, 11, Israel's transgression is good news for the Gentiles, because they did not accept the gospel of the kingdom. God knew they weren't going to accept the gospel of the kingdom. That was the plan from the start. God knew that Eve was going to fall. The helpers fell. The ministry of the Holy Spirit fall. There's transgression with Eve. There's transgression with Israel. But by both transgressions, everything is being restored. This is the plan. God's plan was to offer the gospel of the kingdom. He had to keep the mystery aspects a secret. If Satan would have known that about our gospel, our mystery church, that we're going to be raised from the dead, that we're going to be seated in the heavenly places, that we're going to judge the world and the angels, he would have never crucified Christ. It would never work. The plan would never work. God had to keep that secret and reveal it piecemeal at the appointed time. Paul is the only person in the Bible that is characterized as a chosen instrument of mine. And he's told that he's going to preach to the Jews, to Israel. And, he, and that's where the phrase, to Israel first, and then to the Greek. Because Israel first means he preached the gospel of the kingdom first, gathering members of the kingdom bride, repent, and be baptized. You found the Jews out near by the water, on the out, outer part of the city. So whenever you go into the city, you'd stop there. Preach the gospel of the kingdom first, for a period, until eventually he just went to the Gentiles with the gospel of the grace of God. He stopped preaching the gospel of the kingdom later in his ministry. So Paul's raised up here in the same, in the aftermath of Stephen stoning. He's right there. He's collecting the garments, the coats. So what's that about? Every family has a crest. They have a symbol. Every family member has a symbol. It's plastered on your coat. So whenever they're walking past one another, they know the person's name, they know his standing, whether he's a Sadducee, a Pharisee, right, from the tribe of Levi, they know the tribe, they know so much about you, which is very similar to what we have in heaven. We have chest plates, they're called ephods here in the earth, for Israel, and you can tell by the stones, the precious stones we get as our reward, we wear in our chest. And so some of those stones are finely cut and shiny and just immaculate and beautiful. And some of those stones are like lumps of coal on the lower members of Christ's body. That's a lot about what these teachings are for. So that you can increase your rewards, your heavenly rewards, 2 Corinthians 5.10, your works in the flesh. Share this video with other people. A lot of people have never seen this three witnesses in the spirit, blood, and water and John the Baptist is a spirit witness, Christ the blood witness, 12 is water witnesses. They've never seen or even conceived of anything like this before. But once you see it, and some people see this rather rapidly, some people never are going to see it. Because the veils that are within their being are broken. And once you see these two veils, there's that second veil, the first veil, this is laid out in the same exact image of the temple, Tabernacle of Moses, and the Bible the Bible is laid out in the exact same way. Testifying of heaven. That's above. It's a blueprint. That's what it is once you can see it. Okay. So, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit happened with, St with Stephen. His name means crown. That's what Stephen means. They rejected the crown. The third and final rejection. So then, I mean, if you go to Acts, uh, you see... Paul raised up on the road to Damascus, the first member of Christ's body saved by God's grace through faith without works. At that time, Paul didn't even know what it meant. He was led by the hand into the city. And he continued to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Christ revealed to him our gospel through revelation. Right here. He says, I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, for, are neither I, for 
I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. This Acts 2 meeting, think about it, is between Peter, John, and James. Right? James, at this time, is the Lord's brother. James had just already been killed. The Lord's brother is an earthly presence coming into the kingdom bride. Okay? So, they hadn't heard about the gospel, the uh, the word of the cross gospel message. What Peter, John, and James thought at the famous meeting in Jerusalem, 50 AD, is that these Gentiles that Paul was converting were being converted to their kingdom church. They didn't realize this was a totally different dispensation. So what do you see? You see, and, and many people are mystified out of what I'm about to show you. Paul rebuking Peter. Right here. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For prior to the coming of certain men from James, who used to eat meat with the Gentiles, but when they came in, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloof, fearing the party of the circumcision. There was a lot of fear of the circumcision. If you go back to the example of Saul and Stephen, you see why. Because you could be stoned to death for, what? for saying the wrong thing in public. Just like Stephen was killed. Everybody was fearful of the Jews and the, uh, the those that were of Judaism. Even those that were obeying the gospel of the kingdom, the brothers of the kingdom, were attacking Paul because they didn't realize that this was something that was totally new. So he says, the rest of the Jews join in the hypocrisy with the result that even Barnabas, this is Paul's right-hand man, was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in the presence of all, blah, 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 blah. All that Peter knew was the gospel of the kingdom. He didn't know about this, but that's the reason after an interval of 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along. It was because of the revelation that I went up. And I submitted them the gospel which I preached among the dent. Gentiles, but I did so in private to those who were of reputation, for fear that I be, might be running or had run in vain. All they knew was the gospel of the kingdom. Fourteen years later, they didn't know about the gospel, the uh, gospel of the grace of God. They thought it was one giant party, and they had to be told so they could learn that this is a dispensation of God's grace. You're part of the kingdom dispensation. You are priests. We're kings. We're rulers. We're going to judge the world and the angels. You're going to judge over Israel only. Right? That's what this meeting's all about. Two different churches meeting and discussing, like we are doing right here, the differences between their gospel and our gospel. Okay, so God tricked Satan into killing Jesus Christ by offering the gospel of the kingdom to Israel, and Jesus Christ as king. Satan stopped the kingdom from coming, becoming a reality 2,000 years ago, but God's plan all along kept hidden in him was to raise Jesus Christ from the dead and us with him, part of the mystery of Christ, taught exclusively in the Pauline epistles to Gentiles. Do you see just one good news message preached in the New Testament, or do you see two? Good luck in the debate. That's where it's going to be left, in this debate about the two Gospels, this is my case, and you are at liberty to agree or disagree. Okay. Now, rather than sending me a video, sending me a video does zero assistance, unless it includes going step by step, like, like this right here, laying out the doctrinal precepts precisely, and matching them up so I can go and check, right? But since it, if this is a video that's just me talking and wave my arms around, you're not going that that is not making a case for anything. And remember, and just quoting scripture is not going to prove anything because everybody there's two there's twenty thousand plus denomination of professing Christians, and about that many different ways to interpret the Bible, and there's only one truth. That's why it's called the truth, the message of truth. Not like there's lots of them. And 
as is written underneath in, on, on my, in my topics, the truth is just another opinion. That's why we have these deliberations. And if we, um, if we go back over here and we go to 1 Corinthians 10, that's what I want to do for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Really enjoying doing this. Back in 2004 and 5, this is this is all I was doing. It's been a few years. And um, you know, drink the cup of demons. Um, verse 19. We go to 1 Corinthians 11. Here we go. I was off by a chapter. This is a, a truth that I hope that we can we can realize the truth about and carry forward. For there must also be factions among you so that those who are approved may become evident among you. There's supposed to be divisions. We have we interpret things differently. We're supposed to come together and say, well, we disagree on this and, and disagree on this, and this is my case, I'm presenting now, and this is your case. And those that are watching get to decide. They're the judges. Okay, so um, let's not uh, throw rocks at each other. Be angry about one another. Whenever you are getting angry and you're you're acting out, you're throwing things at me. It's because you ran out of arguments. You're not going to find me doing that. I've been doing this with scholars around the world since before they anybody ever in, had an inkling of the internet. Stack. I used to live in London. That's what I, all I did all day was write letters. Dr. Clifford Denton from the Tishery Project. Pastors, ministers around the world using the mail service before they invented the internet. Now we use message boards. Okay, I'm not going to get mad at you for believing something that's different. I'm not going to judge or whatever. But I'm going to share my view. And I have the right to interpret scripture and share my view just like you do. Okay, and this is your opportunity to share your view. If you're going to, now the, the way that this works is, is, you sow the seeds. I'm sowing the seeds here. I can't teach you anything about Scripture. You can't teach me anything about Scripture either. That's the way it works. But what you do is you show me your perspective, your point of view, your interpretation of the Scripture. And then that goes in as a seed. Now, my heart is... is uh, there, there are different kinds of hearts. Some are rich and like the earth. You know, they can grow anything. And some is deserty. And you throw the seed on there and it's rocky and there's nowhere for it to even start to grow. Right? The idea is for you to sow your seeds. And if it's the real deal, God will cause the growth. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Right here. I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. But God who causes the growth. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are fellow workers, God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. So we're building each other up. You're building me up, I'm building you up. If you have if we have different view, there's no reason to start a war. You share yours, I'll share mine. And don't expect you're gonna I'm not thinking I'm gonna change anything about you. God does that. It takes time. You're not gonna change anything about me either. This, this, these book, this book that I wrote, Mystery Explained, was written in 2004, 2005. It was completed. All right, 14 years ago. There's nothing that. It was recently edited, and when it was published in 2017, there's nothing that I'd want to change. There's nothing I'm going to want to change, because it's that investigation is over, for me. I see it now. I'm sharing it with you. I hope that you see it. Oh, I, I, if you're going to, to make an impression on me and the, these readers, then you're going to quote me and use your argument, support your argument with Scripture. And then we will go back and forth, have clarifying, and both sides can claim victory. That's the way it, it works oftentimes. And then the, uh, the agreement to disagree, well, I'm going to agree to disagree. No, that is lame. 
I'm not going to agree to disagree with you. I'm going to quote you. I'm going to make my case using scripture. The, the key is, under, is uh, the amount of grace, knowledge, and wisdom that God has given you. That's what is how much that you're responsible. If you're a babe in Christ, you're just starting this stuff. God doesn't hold you as accountable as somebody that's done this their entire life. That's from a family of ministers like me. That's been doing this since he was in his teenage, since, since being a teenager, and now I'm in my 60s. Okay? So, expect that the what things that I'm showing you, things that I wrote 15 years ago, and I'm showing you them today, that's the way I see it. And I'm only sharing with you guys from the three witness perspective, spirit, blood, and water, the way that I see it. I'll show you who the spirit witnesses are. I'll show you who the... Uh, the water witnesses are and who the the uh, blood witnesses are throughout the whole Bible happy to do that there are charts of singularities and three witness mystery sets and if you guys you get into my book you whenever we get into that point you'll see the charts if you see find one item one witness that is in the wrong place and it's and you can you show me you, you that I'm, I'm off I'm wrong that would be a greatest day of my life I really love it. It's like pulling the splinter from my eye, and now I can see. All right. So um, I welcome the challenge. Uh, over at the ChristianForums.com website, right here uh, on this YouTube channel, and uh, subscribe. If you write me. You can write me at Terrell at Terrell03.com. I'll get there as time permits. Okay. And we're going to explore this together. So. The, uh, from my perspective, God has shown me this. There's only one truth, and he's shown it to me through his three witnesses, and I'm sharing it with you. Happy to answer questions about that. Generally, there's not enough hours in the day to try to, to uh, debunk, if you will, refute everything from 20,000 different interpretations from the denominations. There's not enough hours in the day to do that. So I mostly want to be helping you to see through the three witnesses. Okay? But I will I'll take the time. If you will take the time and quote me and make your case, then I will offer clarifying and um, clarifying statements. Okay, so top featured article, and there's a lot of articles that are in here. The thing that I realized in doing the Project Black Star is that the Christian section that was in there, that it seemed to me from the responses that I was give, uh, being given that many, many people want the science. They, don't, they didn't sign up for the Christian part. And then... When I'm getting people are writing me, like Charlie's writing me right here, there are some people. Dina's one of them, the new new lady. There's a lot of you guys that signed on. You started writing me scripture questions, but then it gets buried in the Project Black Star newsletter. Never had its place to shine like it can right here. So I hope that more of the subscribers that you signed on for the Mystery Explained to see God's hidden wisdom, you're reading my book. I hope that you'll participate. And I hope that you'll subscribe and that, that uh, when we start the uh, chat room, which would be tonight at 7, 7 to 9 o'clock, do this report. People have time to come home and look at it. Then we show up at the chat room. That's what we're going to be doing. Right now, there are not enough subscribers to have a meeting yet. And I'm, uh, I'm, still, going, I'm still going through my, uh, I've got two more root canals to have on Saturday. I, ju I just had two of them. I'm going to have two more. Doctor's going to be um, requiring more and more of my time going through the month of December, but I'll be done with that in January. I really wanted to get this program started and not wait because January is my month where all the new notifications have to be sent out. It takes almost a whole month to do that. So now is my crunch time to be able to get this done. Okay, so what about the fourth commandment? And the fourth commandment is uh, keeping the Sabbath day holy. So what about it? How does it apply to us? You can go through and read all of my commentary here. You so see, you're getting the long answers, right? It's going to boil down to um, the differences between those that are under law and those that are under grace. Be, if, if you obeyed the gospel of the kingdom 2,000 years ago, then you are, are still under. Christ said that heaven and earth pass, that the law is going to be until heaven and earth passes away. That's what's true for Peter, John, and James. Even people living in the day of the Lord that's coming up. The day of the Lord as a thousand years, there's a long period coming up. Elijah's coming to restore all things. During the day of the Lord, 
they're going to be the gospel of the kingdom, and they're all going to be under Mosaic law. They have to keep the whole law, just like James says. James and James 2 is writing to them. The whole Bible is written for us, but as members of Christ's body, Pauline epistles are written to us. Kingdom disciples living during the day of the Lord, they obey the gospel of the kingdom. Hebrews through Revelation is written to them. The Pauline epistles are there for them to understand grace doctrine, what the who the body of Christ is, but we're going to be gone from the planet. We're going to be, Satan and his minions are going to be chained. We're going to be sitting in those heavenly places looking down on those obeying the gospel of the kingdom, helping Elijah to restore all things to the end of the age. And if you read Colossians um, chapter 3, just start reading to verse 1 there. When you get to verse 4, you'll see that whenever Christ returns, we return with him in great glory. Matthew 24 is we, members of Christ's body, are returning with him in glory to gather those who obeyed the eternal gospel of Revelation 14.6. The elect are those that obey the eternal gospel. They become the citizens of heaven. Peter, John, and James on the sea of glass intercede for those hosts, heavenly hosts. And we are members of the Lamb. God is tabernacled in us, in Christ in us, and we judge the he, God judges the world and the angels through us. We're his living, walking, breathing tabernacles, members of his body. And where you are in the body is going to be well identified in your garments. If you're higher up, then you have a staff. You have a big jewel on the top of the staff. Giant crown, lots of stones. If you're on the bottom of the... Then you don't have the big giant garment. All the precious stones. You might just have a ring with silver ring on your finger. One finger. There's a hierarchy in heaven. Members of Christ's body are jockeying for position in a heavenly hierarchy that looks a lot like a pyramid. Christ at the top. So what kind of images did I pull up for you guys? For those that have never even heard of this, these things before, this is this is the beginning of the book. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. The primer for breaking the code is right here. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The heaven right here is the word of John 1.1. 1, 1, through whom all things were made. And without him was not anything made that was made. So we'll be laying, if you're going to lay this tabernacle out, from Genesis 1, 1 is where you see the singularities. You lay it out and you get John 1, 1 through 3. Then, the next in line is this one. See, You still see God as a singularity here. But the earth has been broken into heaven, heaven and earth. The water's above, the water's below the firmament. The firmament is heaven. This is heaven. This is the highest heaven that David and Solomon talk about. This is where my father who art in heaven. He gets his name from the heaven of Genesis 1.1. Spirit witness, blood witness, water witness. God's three witnesses, spirit, blood, water, are given in Revelation 1.8. God to come, God who is, God who was. Spirit, blood, water, just like this. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Matthew 28.19. Heaven, heaven, and earth. Genesis 1.6-8. All these three witnesses. You take the original three witnesses, God, heaven, earth, you add these three witnesses, and you get 12. And the numerology is established in Genesis 1 for the whole Bible. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, they are everywhere. From the family, this would be the male, this would be the female, this is the seed. This is your soul, this is your body, this is your... Now, this is your soul, this is your spirit, this is your body. So the heavenly man, Christ Jesus, is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right? So a woman wears a veil over her head because of the angels that dwell in the heavens. So the woman is in the place of the man. Eve is the helper like the Holy Spirit is the helper. This is the pattern that it follows. Kind of laying this out as the first. I won't do this every week. This is the three witnesses of the tabernacle temple. They have the veils. This is the way you're supposed to look. But this outer court is pushed out. This court is pushed outside. 
given the holy place a double portion. It's twice the size of the Holy of Holies, the holy place is, but it's not supposed to be. It's just what's outside is supposed to be inside of here. This is what we should see. This is what I was explaining. Open door, the Holy Spirit, then the first veil. The sun in the holy place, the second veil, then the Holy of Holies. This is the domain of God. But that's not what we see. This is what we see. The courts outside, double portion for the holy place, first veil, second veil. These three items, the altar of incense, golden candlestick, and the golden table of shoe bread. Second veil, and then instead of this being the domain of God, it's the Holy Spirit. This is not following the same pattern because we have not reached the time of Reformation yet. So what you see is temporary. It's going to change. In the future, when the earth changes and man changes, the tabernacle is going to change. In the future, this is the way things are now in this broken universe that has spirit, blood, and water witnesses testifying for the original singularity. This is what everybody looks like, all the witnesses put together in one single diagram. God who is, the Son, and Heaven are the blood witnesses. God who is, the Son, Heaven. The holy, the holy uh, place of the tabernacle, the soul of man, where Christ dwells and God dwells in him. One single diagram. That's what's on the back of the book, too. Mystery explained. So then you begin with those simple diagrams, and then by the end of the book, you're getting diagrams like this. You have David on the earth. He has prophets and he has priests. Spirit witnesses, blood witness, water witnesses. The priests up here, the body of Moses, have the same relationship to the Lamb that these priests have to David. The Holy Spirit has elect, serving the Son in the same way, till those two halves are put together. The body of Elijah is the invisible sea on the backside. This is the sea of glass. This is the invisible sea. You don't even realizes there until you understand the three witness pattern. Then you realize that this is the greater half of each of these. So Peter standing here is angel halves over here. You take the man half, the angel half, put them back together again, you have the mortal soul. So whenever the marriage supper of the Lamb happens, it's Revelation 19, 5 through 10, it's happening for these guys that obeyed the gospel of the kingdom. Their man and their angel half are being put back together. Then in the future, see, this is new heavens and new earth. The new heaven and new earth. This would be the heavens. Okay. So, there's no such thing as people. Remember, death is thrown in, into the uh, lake of fire. Revelation 20, verse 14. So, if people aren't going to die anymore. What's going to happen? They're going to live very long lives. So whenever they ser serve David as a prophet or a priest, then they ascend on Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder it's going to be a permanent structure that joins the throne of David and the throne of the Lamb. So instead of dying, you reach maturity. And that these walk up as their angel halves descend and walk down onto this invisible sea and onto this sea of glass. They serve there until they are worthy of joining us in Christ Jesus at their marriage supper, the Lamb. So they come to be members of the Lamb's body by works. Gospel of the Kingdom is all about works and priesthood. We obtain those things for free by obeying the Gospel. God is showing these mighty angels that His grace is greater than all the works of angels and men combined. By the end of the ages, that's what you're going to see. In the last, the very last three souls to come up this ladder, well, before David. David's going to be the last person to come up this. going to complete everything. But the three that passed be just before him, the ones at the very end of the ages of the ages, is going to be Peter, John, and James. Uh, the ones that have no faith at all. The first is the Apostle Paul. The last is Peter. And God is going to show everybody through his wisdom and his foreknowledge 
He knows that Peter, John, and James are the ones that have no faith that are going to be the last three. He already knows. He already sees the end. That's why they were chosen first. In the order that you see in Matthew 10, start at verse 1, the first is Peter, is the last. Go on down the line and you're going to see the last as they're going to ascend up this ladder at the end of, of all the ages. And then uh, this will be the last one that I showed you. I'm showing you from my book. Just showing you how the pattern for how things start off very simple using Venn diagrams. It just starts off with one of these like you saw earlier. And then you see these are inside of each other. It's really more complicated. And it's even more complicated than it's being expressed in these diagrams. So the 7-7 seven, seven man, the 6-6, six, six, he who has wisdom, he will understand the 666 six, six is the number of a man. Everybody wants to try to make that man an earthly man, and that's impossible today. This is the mystery of Christ. This is the mystery of Christ, that we're baptized into his body. The mystery of iniquity is the mystery of the Antichrist. It's the antithesis doctrine. Obey our gospel, you go into the body of Christ. Reject our gospel, and you go into the body of the Antichrist. Accept that false gospel, and you go into the body of the Antichrist. This side is much bigger than this side. Entire denominations are here. Some of the people you'll see arguing against me are already here in the body of the Antichrist, like I'm over here in the member of, a bo of Christ's body. They think they're saved. They're under the spell of the deluding influence, forcing them to believe what is false. All the days of their life. Second Thessalonians chapters 2, start at verse 7. And then once they're deluded by God's deluding influence, they're deluded indeed. There's nothing that you, me, or anybody can do, say. We can set ourselves on fire. Right in front of them. Give them the message. They will not believe it. Because they can't. Okay, so the bottom line here is, let's see, Second Thessalonians 2, it's, it's all summed up. This is the long description of the answer about the command, all the commandments. They're written in the Old Testament. They're given to Moses, who's the steward of the law, Mosaic law, for Israel. A steward, all steward is, is a slave put over the rest of the slaves. Paul is the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. God gave his instructions through Christ to Paul, placed in the blood witness section of your Bible. The Old Testament is the spirit's 39 books for a reason. Three witnesses enfolded together. 13 books of Paul, 13 kingdom books. 13 is the number of the steward. Take the 12. Remember I just showed you how, how you got the 12. Take Christ's 12 and put him in the center and you have the anatomy of a thought with a desire elemental debt in the dead center. Thinking and Destiny by Harold Waldman Percival. That is, those are the kinds of books I read. I mean, this is a really fat book. When I was a teenager, and God was preparing, laying down the foundation to show me these things later. And so 13, the number of the steward, that's why there's the number 13 is prevalent through the Bible. 39 books of the Old Testament, 13 Paul, 13 Kingdom. The book of Acts is the transitional veil book. The second veil is invisible. The second veil is a person. John the Baptist. Stepping through the Old Testament, Malachi 4, 5, and 6. The last two verses of the Old Testament to the first verse of Mark 1. John the Baptist. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. As Elijah in the Old Testament. So that's an invisible veil. So you have two veils. One's invisible. One is seen. But it is a book of the Bible. That contains blood witness and water witness parts. It says that when you're looking at the veil of the temple, one side would be blue and one side would be red. Blood witnesses, water witnesses, spirit witnesses are throughout the entire Bible. Once you see the symbolism, then you'll realize this is God's true Bible code. He's teaching you because he's going to teach you that the helper attributes belong to the Holy Spirit and Eve. They're both water witnesses. The priesthood, water witnesses. The earth, water witnesses. You have a long line of water witnesses and God has given you the information selectively by sharing attributes of, of particular members. You have to connect the dots that they're all water witnesses. And then you see that Christ, the seed, heaven, God who is, your soul, these are all blood witnesses. They're all begotten. Every single one of them are begotten. 
And then the spirit witnesses always come first. The Father, God to come. All right, my Father, we are in heaven. The heavens. You'll see glory attached to the heavens in the scriptures and the glory. They're always attached to the spirit witnesses. And they're given to the blood witnesses because eventually the spirit witnesses and the water witnesses all disappear. Eventually there is no more Father. My Father who art in heaven. There is no more Holy Spirit because the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit become the Word again. The Son testifies for the Word as the blood witness. And like heaven testifies for this creation, God who is testifies for God. All the blood witnesses are, the ones, are the ones that are testifying for the original singularity. Okay, this is uh, the Crystal Power interviews. Oh, she interviewed me. She's already written to schedule another one. She wants to see more about the Mystery Explained. And uh, we got into that some. But uh, it, especially if she starts seeing the pattern, then this is this is like a, like a kid in a candy store. This is a kid on Christmas morning. Whenever you start to see it, your, your heart just jumps at the next thing. She wrote my brief bio right here. This is what's in the description box. This is from, this is, I hope that you'll go to Crystal's channel, click on it and, and subscribe. And click on the updates, I'm the, the, ring the bell. Then this is the channel, well if you're watching this video, you already are at the script, scripture channel. This is the video, so if you share, when you get your hands on this newsletter, share it with your friend and then they can click here and they can go find my, um, my new YouTube channel. This is the Black Star YouTube channel right here. It's the information that Crystal wanted to share right here. Then the next, uh, I'm looking at the time, I'm not going to be able to go through all these articles, but they're in the newsletter. Okay, Daniel, uh, and if you subscribe next year, then you're going to get the links so that you can begin right here at the first mystery report a newsletter. Pardon me. Daniel 7, a prophetic warning. And this fellow right here, that uh, Dina, I hope I'm saying your name right, it's either Dina or Dina, I think it's Dina, then uh, she really likes this guy. She's sending me his videos, sending me a video is not going to be a convincing argument. But you see, I will share it right here, everybody reading this newsletter, you guys that are looking over my shoulder, you can see what the link is, you can go check it out. This is... Uh, my answer to it this is the original video so you go check them out but here's the deal and the the issue that i see with his work and he looks like a very nice guy not criticizing the person not a crit not criticizing dina or anybody else this is this fellow's work it's his interpretation that we're addressing here which i must assume is your interpretation okay so here's the deal. We're living in this mystery time right here. Remember I showed you John, John the Baptist, Christ, the Twelve, the kingdom bride being cut off, God get, starting the body of Christ. Essentially, he put the kingdom dispensation on the back burner. The kingdom dispensation already started. It's just held in abeyance now, put on the back burner. God's going to build this body of Christ and then we're going to be taken and then a lot the Holy Spirit thread it goes to the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 13 beginning in verse 2 when the Holy Spirit speaks and he says separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work this dispensation of God's grace taking the forefront then until Acts 28 28 whenever Paul says I'm just going to the Gentiles from now on so that was the cutting off doesn't happen immediately with Stephen's being killed. It's done progressively until the Acts 28, 28, whenever Paul goes exclusively to the Gentiles preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So we're living in this mystery time. Guess what? Um, did I pull up this diagram? I didn't pull it up for you. I'm going to pull it up for you right now and then show you and then let you guys go. This is it right here. Daniel, Ezekiel, Zechariah. They're standing back here in the Old Testament. 
and they can see very, very clearly over into the upcoming day of the Lord. Particularly the end of the age, Daniel's going to go backwards and tell you this happens in the 62nd week. This happens in this week. This ha he, he knows exactly how it's going to happen for the end of the age. If you read Daniel, then you'll realize that he is writing in context to the end of the age. That's in Matthew 24. That's what Christ, that's the, the question of the disciples. Tell us about your coming and the end of the age. Matthew 24, verse 3. It's all about the end of the age. The great tribulation happens over here. Paul describes how the day of the Lord begins. This is what the destruction that Paul describes is for this black star crossing event that's about to happen in the month of May, springtime crossing event. Christ is describing a fall time crossing event at the end of the age. These events are separated by 3,600 years. This day of the Lord is not a thousand years, it's 3,600 years. The phrase thousand years means so long as it takes. It's a Greek euphemism, it's a figure of speech. So that could take a thousand years. It doesn't mean a thousand years, it means so long as it takes for the words of the prophets of old to be fulfilled. Acts 3, start at verse 19. These, this day of the Lord hasn't even started yet. And some people, they don't realize that there's a start to the day of the Lord and the end of the day of the Lord. They just want to make this an event rather than as a thousand years. Paul describes how it starts. Your fella is describing events that are going to happen at the end of the age. So that's the physical, when the physical Satan Antichrist, false prophet, all incarnate onto the earth as men. Right now we're in the mystery period. Christ literally comes. We return with him in glory at the end of the age. Christ coming for us here is, a, is part of the mystery. It's described as the mystery in the twinkling of an eye. I tell you a mystery. We will not all, all die. Or I don't have the, uh, the phrase exactly. First, First Corinthians chapter 15, start at verse 51. But we will all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. That happens right here. That starts the day of the Lord. Satan is chained and we take their places in the heavenly places and help Elijah through this entire period. So your fella that is given this video, he believes that what's happening over here is happening now and it's not. Once you realize that this is the spirit part, prophecy unclothed, and this is the prophecy fulfilled part where prophecy is clothed, clothed you realize this is the spirit this is the body part this is literal then you'll realize we're living in a soul period the mystery of christ we don't see members baptized in the body of christ we don't see the antichrist setting up any abomination of of uh, desolation in any temple either there's not even a temple in israel you cannot fulfill Matthew 24, because we don't even preach the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14. The Antichrist can't come literally and stand the temple that isn't there. Verse 15 and 16. That happens over here after the temple is restored by Elijah. It's done over here. Okay, so you can send me a thousand of these videos where this fella insists that what's happening at the end of the age is happening now. And my answer is going to be the same, and I'm going to have to show you this diagram. So that you can realize, yes, there are things happening here that mirror things happening here, but as if we are looking in a mirror dimly. So what does that mean to Paul? There's a soul event that happens here that mirrors what happens here. But in Paul's day, a mirror wasn't something like you look in today. A mirror was a polished piece of metal that was like this. It would distort your image. If you would hold it just right, you can see yourself in it. It took some skill because they weren't exactly flat. So when Paul's describing the mirror dimly thing, he's comparing the soul to the body. The soul part you can't visibly see, like you can see this down here, but there the soul overshadows the body. So that if you are wise, you are one of the mature, then if, and you know what the scriptures say about what happens over here, the seven years of tribulation, 
then you can see that there's tribulation happening here, right? And there's information down below. This is how the Bible's laid out. This is the diagram that I'm showing you right now and making the argument to help Tina to see. Okay? And then the rapture, this is what got Steve ready to go into blast-off mode. He was really furious about it because he has views that are contrary to what the three witnesses say, which is fine with me. Everybody can wake up in their bed every morning believing whatever you want to believe. It doesn't matter to me. Don't get mad at me because these this is my views, right? It's uh, the First Amendment, freedom of, of religion. You practice yours, I practice mine. I share mine, you share yours. But attacking me means you don't have an argument. Okay? Same basic diagrams to show th that Paul, and especially whenever um, the comment made to me was, and it's down here in, uh, well, this is very nice of Kathy to, for you to write a, um, a word of gratitude. Appreciate that very, very much. And then uh, another rapture date connection. Here's going to be my answer. She's spending a lot of my time writing throughout the week this commentary how to open my book the mystery explained when you get it attached to your notification email the rapture heresy this is where Steve he's getting a little bit he's getting kind of upset at, with me and so this this is what I would do is just skip my commentary this is what you're, you're trying to convince me is bad this is Paul the point is, is that Paul teaches grace doctrine directly from the scriptures just read his words in modern English and tell me the part that's bad. You think it's a bad thing? He's talking about us in the twinkling of an eye, putting on immortality. This is the one I was just quoting to you. We will all, um, he says, we will not all sleep. So I was wanting to say die there. He says sleep. But we all will all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. This is Paul talking by way of the Holy Spirit. This isn't me making this stuff up. And then here's the uh, the, the verse, Horaptio, caught up. In the Greek, Horaptio, that's where the word rapture comes from. People think it's not in the Bible. It darn sure is in the Bible. People disappear from right in front of people to appear in other places in the Bible. Read Acts 8. You'll see that he just disappeared. Same word. For this we say to you by the way of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the, until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who fall asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dead will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so that we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort each other with these words. How are we going to comfort each other with these words if they're bad? Because they're good. Somebody has a misconception of what this says. And somebody doesn't even want to look at the what the verses say, what Paul is teaching. The notion that somebody invented this rapture thing like in 1900 or something is ridiculous. This is being taught in the Greek, in the Egyptian manuscripts, the Byzantine manuscripts, before there was ever a Bible ever made. This was written down by way of the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. Okay, so you can hate it, not like it, preach against it, whatever you want. But I would appreciate it if you'd show me the reason that I'm supposed to believe differently. If you don't, if you're just going to throw rocks at me, then we're never going to get in. You can't help anybody. Quote my right here. Paul teaches the by the word of the Lord. Blah blah blah. blah. Now anything that I have off, quote me. Show me where I'm off. I've been doing this a long time. The more you argue, the better you're going to get. Let me tell you from first-hand experience, when you run out of arguments, that's whenever you start swinging, spiritually swinging. So here's the point about the judging of the, this is a more advanced diagram from my book, The Mystery Explained, showing this again, what the prophets can see, what the prophets can't see. When things are hidden in God to be revealed at the appropriate time, that's what the word mysterion means. Then you cannot give a prophet back here credit for seeing it. 
It says that our gospel was hidden, but now revealed. Romans chapter 16, start at verse 25. Those three verses at the end were added after by the Apostle Paul, after the close of the book of Acts. That's why they do not appear in the critical text. The older Byzantine manuscripts stops at verse 24. The received text from the Antiochian manuscripts, that includes it. Paul added that later. He got a copy of the letter that was being circulated and he added it because he wasn't allowed to reveal that aspect of the mystery in the original letter. It was written too soon. God didn't close the door on the gospel of the kingdom yet. After that door was closed, then Paul was able to add the mystery aspects to that Roman letter that he refined in his prison epistles, writing to the Ephesians, writing to the Colossians. The event horizon singularity, this is pretty exciting. For those interested in this topic, I'm going to go through and show you from the scriptures why I hold the views that I do. And so this is uh, March 2013. So I'm going to give you my mystery explained. I'll copy this from the other file. I see this is a JPEG instead of the TIFF. So the TIFF. These are some of the more complicated things that you'll get into in the more complicated diagram. See spirit, blood, and water. God, heaven, earth. And you see things broken down. Differences for the kingdom bride member and the member of body Christ member were turned different ways. Our ephods are turned different ways too. So again, you can see this. I've been busy, busy, busy this week writing this commentary. I loved writing this commentary. It gives me the thrill like from back in 2004, whenever I was sitting at my desk all day long without even eating sometimes doing this work. Top stories of the week. See, similar format. The articles in the top, most important, featured. And the ones where I'm going to take time and write your commentary. Then top stories. This is just shared information about what's going on from a Christian perspective. Hope that you'll be a, just even if you're a newsletter subscriber, you can send me articles. And then you'll have all of these newsletters and be able to use them as a reference. In my view, they're extremely valuable. This is whenever those are left behind that are in the survival group program, having a copy of these it's going to help explain a lot of things. Growing acceptance of microchip implants. Would you get chipped? See, it's from more from a Christian perspective. Then weather. If you're in the Northeast, you know what's going on up there. We're not feeling, we're feeling just a little bit down here in Florida. Signs of the Times. This is one of the best articles that I've ever seen. It's published by, at, the, at this website. It just came out. Uh, what? It just came out two days ago. Volcanoes, earthquakes, and the 36-year comet cycle. So, the Black Star report, obviously, is from the Black Star scientific perspective. There are going to be some Black Star things that are in this, because this is biblical. This is the destruction that Paul describes, <clears throat> pardon me, in First in First Thessalonians 5, start at 1. It's just a springtime crossing event. I'm losing my voice here rather than a fall time event very long I would could I did not post the entire thing I posted a lot of it but going back in the manuscripts you know I was even look at some of this 366 366 350s 367s so I'm wondering if if uh, these are numbers of days in a black star orbit cycle I haven't had time to go through all that yet but I wanted to share it with you guys in this, it was shared with me. Want to share it with you guys, and give you an idea of what a uh, this is. Uh, oh, the economics, the, the um, bottom. This is uh, politics and politics from a Christian perspective. Religious freedom watchdog concerned about looming oversight. Now, this is where Dina's pro prophecy guy is accurate because he's describing what's happening at the end of the age. It's not the United States doing it, but it's the counterpart of the United States doing it at the end of the age. And there is persecution going on, and there's persecution going on now of Christians here, just like those obeying the gospel of the kingdom are going to be persecuted at the end of the age. It's different though. This is more of spiritual warfare, soul versus soul. 
at the end of the age, it's going to be vis uh, literal, physical against physical, man against man, body against body. People literally being killed. People are being killed now spiritually. They're being given over to the Antichrist for the destruction of their soul. They're being seated in the Antichrist in the lake of fire rather than in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right now, they don't realize it. Because if you're going to make everything, if you're going to take the literal translation of what's happening at the end of the age, 3,600 years from now, and try to apply it to today, you see, you're trying to apply it to today, that is uh, breaking the veil that this divides the scriptures. We are to stand within the Pauline epistles, within that holy place of the, of the text, and dispense grace doctrine to the members of Christ's body all around us. When you reach outside of those veils and start grabbing doctrine, start grabbing commands, and place your members of Christ's body under those commands, then you're breaking the veil, dispensing bad, unsound doctrine, and that destroys the very soul. So let's, uh, before I show you the bottom of this, I want to go back right over here. Many people are unaware of this warning. But Peter is the one that I just showed you was being warned and that he was being refuted because about over the truth of the gospel. This is a solemn warning that I hope everybody will listen to. Those that are trying to mix the water ministry of Jesus Christ, which is kingdom doctrine, and then with the blood part, which is grace doctrine. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him. This is the mystery. This is what my book's about. The mystery explained. According to the wisdom given him, wrote to you also in all of his letters, speaking them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. This is important stuff. God, God's mystery, the mystery of Christ, the mystery of our translation, the mystery, our God, mystery gospel, they're all taught in the Pauline epistles. When we try to take the gospel of the kingdom and take those doctrinal precepts and cram it into the that adds works to the gospel of the gospel of the kingdom into the word of the cross that must be accepted by God's grace through faith without works apart from works okay so let's go back over here to the newsletter then I'm going to uh, really I'm going to let you guys go the uh, so there are different sections nothing is written in stone here write me I'm I'm uh, my ear is inclined toward you guys to produce each Tuesday the type of Christian based newsletter that you want okay so these are the uh, we didn't have time David is is one of the first subscribers and he is going to help me like new helps me by sending me articles every Tuesday night later today new is going to send me the articles that go into the different sections of the Black Star Newsletter. David is going to be doing that for this. So we didn't even have time to do all that today. So this is the inaugural first newsletter. And I, I did things, you know, as I see fit. The first health and wellness, the top 20 Christian health and fitness blogs to follow for 2019. Just came out on over the, November the 30th. Tons of helpful links. Very important that you take care of yourself physically. And I'm learning that all this money going to the dentist and spiritually then this is a pretty important part I should share with you before we go this is this shares the overview plan what's going on I do not see us having chat room experience on Tuesday night the uh, with myself and John oh by the way the supporters for this for this week include David and Jonathan so it's me David and Jonathan that are the program at this moment. David is helping me. He's going to help with uh, the chat room. And once we get that going, it may be just after the first before we're able to do that. We may do some test runs here before that. If uh, 
Jonathan, if you want to write me, it's only you two that are in the program at this moment. Okay. So your input, obviously, very important to me. And um, if you want to meet on Tuesday nights, especially David and Jonathan, you're the only two that qualify that are subscribing to the program. So if you uh, want to test things out, then I'm happy to do that with you. It'll be a Tuesday evening thing. You need to write me in a, uh, during the day today, well, after you see this, and then uh, let me know. Otherwise, then I would, it seems more common sense, especially if we're going through the holidays. The reason that I'm doing this now instead of waiting is because January, I wouldn't be able to get it started until February because all the work I have in January. Okay, so this is, uh, this is how the ball starts rolling. This explains how this update comes on Tuesday afternoons. I get uh, new sends his articles on Tuesday night. David will send his on Sunday night. I work all day Monday on this newsletter. All right. Well, I work on both newsletters all week long, but this is crunch day. Monday is crunch day yesterday. And then I rest when I write my commentary, and then I prepare for making this video. And this video link goes right up into the link, just like in the other newsletters. Some of the things are the same. Some things are a little bit different. But appreciate you guys' support very, very much. And... Um, Doing what I can to upgrade, to up to get these links out that are Christian only things, and share them with you right up here at the top of the newsletter. This video link will go right there. So whenever you do get your hands on this, obviously Jonathan and uh, David are going to get their hands on this right away because they have the Dropbox folder link to be able to download it. So share this with your friends, just the link to this newsletter. Share it with your friends. And that's how we're going to get subscribers. And, and with this chat room, then the name and everything is down there in that section. And you'll know how to. You can go sign up. And I'm open to changing it to a different chat format. This is just the one that we used previously where, where we had hundreds of members. Okay. And uh, we're going to play it by ear moving through the holidays. But after the first the same time that I'm uh, getting out all the notifications for, for everybody, then on the Tuesday evenings, then I would like to um, meet in the chat room, and then we can deliberate everything that was shared in this video and written in the written report. That way, I have the opportunity to actually record what is done back and forth, edit that, and share that in the following newsletter. So whenever you get next week's newsletter on the two churches of the New Testament, then you're going to have a follow-up. I'm going to lay out my case just like this. And then you're going to have a follow-up with questions and answers from the previous week where you guys sent me questions and answers or you made a point, right? So people that are coming along later, they can download. They go, they're going to get the link that's going to have newsletter 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 in it. They start off with one, and they can see how things shake out in week two, and then start the churches. See how that shakes out in week three, start the four baptisms. That's the plan. So this, there's, this is going to be a uh, jam-packed program, jam-packed newsletter, and uh, lengthy update reports. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's going to want to watch a, uh, that wants just a short report, like we had before. Well, just watch the beginning of the video until you get... I'll get beyond your attention span and just turn it off. That would, uh, maybe you'll come back to the rest of it later. So uh, this is where this video link will go. And uh, it should be just after the first of the year that this this first newsletter will be available to YouTubers and, and people that insist they must have whatever they can get, you know, for free. I want to share it with you. All the newsletters will not be shared. It's going to be like one out of the first four. And then one out of the second four. One out of the third four. Okay, that's the way the program works at uh, the website right here, terrell03.com. Subscribe right down here. If you have any in this uh, video has not been updated yet, I am running and running and running right now. So much to do. I'm going to get it updated. I'm happy that I got uh, volume 47 of the Black Star newsletter for you guys and uh, these recent interviews and updated. So I'm uh, doing doing my best, and I will. Uh, I appreciate your support very, very much, um, Jonathan. And uh, Jonathan was 
one that he was the number one subscriber. As soon as he saw my report last week, he went to the website and subscribed. And then David is number two, two guy. I'm really wondering who's, because you know I'm a numerology guy, who is going to be that third supporter of the research. So I hope to be calling your name this week, this coming week, as a supporter of the research. And I will uh, get more information right here in the scripture section. You can start watching these videos. You're going to see where we're about to go. And I'll see you guys on the next uh, Black Star report. I'm sorry, Black Star report. Here I am in autopilot. That's going to be done on Thursday. So this is, uh, I'll see you guys on the next mystery report that's going to be uploaded next um, Tuesday. There will be a special report during the week when I see something, you know, that really stands out. That will be a special report during the week right here on this channel. And then um, those are the articles that will appear right at the top. I think I'm thinking I'm down in the newsletter. Those are the ones that are going to appear right at the, at the uh, top of the newsletter for next week. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you on the next um, mystery report.